coming to the topic non alcoholic fatty liver disease the outline of today's talk will include the definition the etiology epidemiology pathogenesis evaluation risk assessment role of liver biopsy management and what are the recent advances now if you look at non alcoholic fatty liver disease it is mere accumulation of fat in the liver in the absence of recent or ongoing intake of significant amount of alcohol which is up to the tune of 20 g per day for both males and females now this fatty liver can be either primary which is non alcoholic fatty liver disease in which secondary causes of hepatic steatosis that is accumulation of fat in the liver have been ruled out or it can be secondary for example like hepatitis c virus in born errors of metabolism tpns so the list is uh, we'll go through that later now non alcoholic fatty liver disease by definition it is excessive fat ac accumulation with presence of insulin re resistance now for which there should be more than 5% steato in the hepatocytes and there should be an exclusion of secondary causes of acute fatty liver now this broad term would include pure fatty liver which is pure steatosis and steatosis with mild lobular inflammation a entity known as nash which is the entity which include early fibrosis late fibrosis or eventually cirrhosis now all these things can progress eventually to hepatocellular carcinoma nash can itself progress to hepatocellular carcinoma so for this it is important to understand or the stage of the disease and what intervention has to be done and how the diagnosis has to be made and important to note is that definitive diagnosis of nash requires a liver biopsy so it is not merely on just on the basis of blood investigations if you look at the global prevalence of non alcoholic fatty liver disease it ranges from 13% to 30% however the concern is that in india studies have shown that the prevalence is up to the tune of 30% now this affects around a quarter of the adult asian population the risk factors include obesity metabolic syndrome urbanization sedentary lifestyle nowadays and western diet all of these factors have made non alcoholic fatty liver disease a epidemic in asia some studies have shown that the prevalence of hepatitis nash in patients with nfld is up to the tune of 65% so this is a matter of concern now the nomenclature earlier was non alcoholic however it includes a lot of other etiologies of fatty liver now if you are looking at the recent nomenclature which is known as metabolic associated fatty liver disease for this you should have hepatic steatosis in adults that is detected either by imaging techniques blood markers scores or by liver histology this is broadly classified into three types if the person is obese that is the bmi is more than 23 and the patient has fatty liver then it and other causes have been ruled out then it is mfld if there was an entity known as lean nash earlier which used to constitute up to 10% of the population so if the patient's bmi is less than 23 patient is not obese then you have to look at two metabolic risk parameters these include waist circumference blood pressure triglycerides cholesterol so if insulin resistance so if any of these two are present then the patient would be qualified to be labeled as metabolic associated fatty liver disease or the patient has got type 2 diabetes mellitus if you look at the etiology of fatty liver now the list is endless it includes acquired metabolic disorders which are most common like diabetes dyslipidemia inborn errors of metabolism which are seen which manifest predominantly in children post surgery another important list is of routine drugs which you see in day to day practice for example cardiologists will be prescribing amiodarone methotrexate by rheumatologists estrogen uh, by gynecologists so these drugs have to be checked what is the drug history of the patient so there should be a drug checklist that whether any drug is contributing to steatosis now coming to the pathogenesis now usually this this is the natural course of uh, normal liver ending up with cirrhosis in a patient with nafld so there are two hits the primary hit would would cause progression of normal liver to simple steatosis 
that is because of sedentary lifestyle high fat diet insulin resistance and obesity the secondary hit which is the more worrisome feature that is nash is caused by oxidative stress mitochondrial dysfunction inflammation in the liver gut dysbiosis and endotoxins the natural history of fatty liver is such that 80% of the people are going to just have isolated fatty liver these people will be at a increased risk of development of metabolic complication that is insulin resistance diabetes hypertension but 20% will have nash so the, this constitutes a significant proportion of patients with fatty liver over 15 years up to 11% will progress to have compensated cirrhosis which can either decompensate with time or progress to hepatocellular carcinoma routine blood investigation routine tests are uh, advocated usually but they are not good predictors of uh, degree of steatosis or for that matter degree of fibrosis liver function test will usually reveal a mildly elevated transaminitis that is sgot sgpt will be elevated or maybe ggt will be elevated however majority will have a normal liver function test so that alt levels are poor predictors of fatty liver disease so a person if he has fatty liver and alt level is normal so it does not completely exclude nash other tests are done for metabolic parameters like glucose intolerance and cholesterol triglycerides and another set of investigations are there to evaluate for rare causes of liver diseases which include the autoimmune celiac hemochromatosis wilson's disease so these are purely meant for exclusion purpose how do you assess fibrosis in a patient who has got fatty liver staging of hepatic fibrosis is necessary in all patients who have got a fatty liver transient elastography that is fibro scan it is the only modality that can detect liver fibrosis non invasive it gives measurement of the liver stiffness which correlates well with the degree of fibrosis however this test is usually reserved for patients who do not have obesity because then it inter interferes with the assessment other tools are non invasive uh, test for fibrosis